understand the strategy, understand what you're getting into, understand the reason behind each and every um, decision that you make and own it because it's your portfolio and that's the portfolio that will help you retire. That's the portfolio that will free you up to look after your family, to spend time with your friends. Welcome to another episode of Get Rare Show. The purpose of this show is to bring experts to you with regards to property investing. Of course, property investing is not alone. We need a team of experts and the knowledge with it. So today on the show, we have Kyle Messon from CFC Finance. CFC Finance has been helping clients acquire properties from last 15 years, and Kyle has been helping people, hand-holding them for last 10 years. Kyle, thank you so much for joining me today. Awesome. Really appreciate that. Thank you so much, Rusty. Really great uh, to have the opportunity to talk with yourself and with those watching along. Like you said, CFC has been helping clients build properties for 15 years and having the right strategy working with the team and avoiding the pitfalls that many people fall into is so important to do. So thank you for the opportunity to talk. No, it's my pleasure and it's for the benefit of the audience. And of course, I learn on the process as well. <laughs> it's very much mutual here. So you, you talked about strategy and I know you're pretty huge on strategy. It's not about a vanilla mortgage or purchase. <laughs> what do you mean by that? So CFC's motto is we love helping families. Now, I've seen it happen on multiple occasions where we jump into something and we don't think correctly about the strategy that we're wanting to achieve. Let's just talk about finance in particular. So we've got a client who wants to buy their first home. Mm -hmm. And they've got a real priority to finance their first home on the northern beaches. They, they want to buy. That's what they've decided. What they can do is they can go and buy three investment properties. And by the time they've done that, they've lost the opportunity to buy their owner occupied property. Versus identifying what is the priority? Is that important to you? Let's buy this property first and then buy the second or third property second. Right. Uh, another example is you want to retire with wealth in the future and you've got $180,000 worth of available equity. Do you take that $180,000 worth of available equity and go buy two or potentially three properties? That's a deposit for two or three properties. Or do you invest that $180,000 onto a makeover of your house? Do you go and build a new kitchen and put a, a pool for $70,000? What is more important? Do you invest in your family's long-term growth? Or do you invest in your own occupied property, for example? And these are important questions that it's good to get through. Do we help the clients purchase a property, even with strategy, if we're going to flip that property and we're going to turn it over in 12 months' time? Because there's a great opportunity for equity. Right. Do we want to use lenders' mortgage insurance if we don't have to, mm -hmm. if we're going to sell that in 12 months' time anyway? So there's lots of different things that we can talk about with the clients because it's important to see not just where the clients want to be in six months' time or immediately right now, but what is the client doing today that is going to help the client in five, 10, and 20 years' time? Because you need to know where you want to end up so we make the right decisions today. Sure. So what I'm hearing from you is that it's very much driven by the end goal. Correct. So it's basically where you want to be and, of course, where you are, what limited resources you have, whether it's in terms of the deposit or the equity, or, or maybe just your serviceability in terms of how much they can borrow today Correct. and then try to work out the journey. Is that right in, in a summary? 100%. It's about where you want to be, understanding that and making that step towards it and making sure that what is the biggest priority. So if your biggest priority is you would like to live in a certain area or you would like to have passive income or you would like to develop a property, what is the biggest priority? Focusing on that first and making sure that any steps we take lead towards that and don't hinder that goal. Sure. I know Kyle for quite a long time now and uh, he has been with my own mortgages as well. So thank you so much. And I really see right. the value that we are talking about here. Uh, but for the benefit of the audience, uh, you talk about a scenario that what's your prime priority and then work towards it. But I remember like we have in the past talked about that, okay, yes, this is your priority, but then it might be worthwhile to consider this thing first because Correct. otherwise this might stop me to do what I really want to do. So you can actually help me reprioritize or order my own action thing as well. 100%. So I've got a client at the moment. Starting off, they've got their home, they've got a mortgage on the home, they don't have any investments. Okay. 
we want to extract some equity for them. So they want to get their deposits and they want to start looking at houses. But for the wife and the party, it's really important they get a swimming pool. They want to spend $80,000 on a swimming pool that they're going to have for the next summer. Now, they've got a choice. And there is no right choice or wrong choice. They've got a choice to say, do we spend $80,000 on the swimming pool because of the family benefit, or do we spend $80,000 as a deposit on a property that's going to earn income? Now, I know which decision I might take personally. For me, I'm going to say I'm going to borrow the next-door neighbor's pool. <laughs> but for them, it's very important to say, what is that decision? And yep. we can easily finance someone's pool and say, no worries, let's not ask about your long-term goals. You want money for a pool? Let's do it. Take out, max it out, take you to 80%, get the 80,000, buy the pool. And then in six months' time, they come to me and say, Kyle, I want to buy an investment property now. And I'm sorry, it's too late. We've mm -hmm. used the equity, you've got your pool. But now we don't have the option to buy that investment property. Now, either option is OK. But it's important that the client gets to make that decision themselves. And I know which one I want to do, but it's uncovering that for the client. Where do they personally want to be? Do we want to invest in building a portfolio, like you said? Do I want to invest in retiring in five years' time or 10 or 15 years' time? And which route is going to help me get there? And then when we're choosing finance, what is the finance to help you achieve that? Sure. Now, excellent. As I said, there's no right or wrong answer, but at the same time, it really is driven by your long-term goals Correct. and how we go about prioritizing. So thank you so much for sharing that. Now, if I have to change gears and talk about why this mortgage broking industry? Like, there are banks out there. There's a loyalty there. If I'm banking with, say, CBA, why shouldn't I just go with the bank that I'm banking with for last... 15 years, 20 years, they know me. They know all my numbers. And they have amazing rates, like I always see on, on the TV advertisement. So why should I bother coming to you? It's a really good question. I'm glad you asked. My background actually was working for one of the major banks. I was a bank manager for six and a half years. I loved what I did. And I helped clients fund their goals. I really appreciated what I was doing. When I became a broker and partnered with CFC, the thing that I realized is not every bank is perfect for every situation. Mm -hmm. We've got a, a client at the moment. They're wanting to uh, purchase a duplex, a jewel key property, and we're getting them the funding for it. But do you know which one of the major banks will fund 90% on that property? Which one will only fund 80? And did you know one of the major banks will only fund 70%? on dual key properties before lender's mortgage insurance is required. So there's a fair bit of variability there's within, a very, within the There's a big difference. Wow. Do you know which bank is which? I know what I do. <laughs> Correct. So <laughs> I leave it to you as in the specialist in that area. When I was working at the bank, it was fantastic. We had a policy with two years financials, fairly standard. If a client would come who's self-employed and they want to buy a property or a dual key property, and my policy happened to say you can only buy at 70%, I would tell the clients, I'm sorry, you cannot buy that property because we need a 30% deposit. Maybe this property is not for you. Mm. As a broker, I can say, bank one will do a great rate. It's 70%. You're going to have to put a 30% deposit. But did you know, I've actually got bank two here, and they'll do it at 90%. I don't mind which one you choose. Because right now you're putting client at the center Correct. of your decision making. We've got opportunities. You've got a scenario that works with one bank or works with another. That's OK. You can choose which bank you choose. Yes. That's up to you. But you make the decision. Bank one, 70%. Bank two, 90%. You make the call. The other real benefit that we're seeing a lot for clients at the moment is getting valuations up front. Equity, as we know, is the hardest thing to come by. When you're wanting to build a portfolio, quite often for people starting out, we need the capital. We need that deposit. We need that um, deposit to put down your 10% deposit or whatever deposit we're putting in. You need the cash. You can be earning a huge amount of money, but if we don't have the cash to put down as the deposit, you can't fund your goals. Sure. 
we're helping a client at the moment. They've got a, a property in the Hills District and we want to extract some equity. They've got an $800,000 loan on the property already. We're getting valuations back from 1.02 million all the way up to 1.22 million. Wow, that's a huge. So we're looking $200,000 difference within a week. This happened two weeks ago. Different Properties. banks use different valuation companies. So we can order, we've got the, the privilege of being able to order four or five or six valuations and you can see the difference. We've got a client who's got a property in the Sunshine Coast and we're helping them review their finance, extract some equity and we got valuations 520, 525, 560, 619 and 640. Wow. Same property done within a week of each other. Now, we don't know which bank is going to give which valuation. Sure. So we've got the opportunity to say, let's look at the valuations. And then probably you can compare their offer rates right. as well and then see what it actually means to the client and the long-term goals that we were just talking about. And you make the decision. Bank one, this is the right. This is the amount of equity we can extract. Bank two, this is the right. It might be cheaper, but you can extract $40,000 less equity. You make the decision. Sure. And it gives the client options. And when we are making such decisions as an investor with, with the money that you're talking about, it's all mathematical at the end of the day. Correct. Even if it's investing or even your funding for your home, you can work it out to the dollar figure. And what I'm getting from you is that if an individual walks into a branch, they don't really have a choice. They are just given that, okay, this is the rate, this is the package, this is the valuation. But when they come to you, on their behalf, you can go and shop around with their consent Correct. for the right rates, for the right package, and for the right valuation. As you said, capital is, mm. is so critical it's because that is one of the limiting factors or limiting assets that we have. Correct. So we really have to wait either in terms of savings or let the property grow. If you have done the right job, capital growth will happen. But then there's an element of valuation which mm. you come in and help them out. So now thank you so much for sharing that. If I talk about specifically about this market, as there's a lot of fear of missing out, limited supply, lots of buyers going up, probably on the back of the year that we had, it was very really uncertain on the back of COVID. Now there's a vaccine coming up and it's already on the rollout. Con consumer confidence is coming back. There's a lot of stimulus from the Reserve Bank and the government with regards to the federal tax rates mm. bringing forward super cheap, lower interest rates. As an example, we used to see five, six percent. Now we are talking about two, two and a half, even sub two, uh, which I saw recently. Sub two rates. Yeah, but go and look for the properties yep. on a daily basis. And what I'm finding is that there's a huge turn up of the potential buyers. And now, how do they go about, you know, quoting or bidding for the property when they don't have a pre-approval? So my question to you, Kyle, today is, why it is so important to have a pre-approval when someone is going out to bid for a property? Pre-approvals give confidence. And when we're wanting to make a competitive offer, it's vital to have the confidence to say, this is what I can do. Now, there is a huge trend. And unfortunately, the major banks, all the major banks, they do system approved pre-approvals. They do approvals that the computer says yes or no, but no human checks the pay slips, the bank statements, okay. the details. Sometimes they even put subject to a credit check on the approval letter. And what that does is it removes the confidence to purchase. So we've got a client who's purchasing a Victoria unit. And the, the broker said, we've got a bank. The bank should be okay. Go buy the property. Come back and see us when you've got the signed contract of sale. And we'll help arrange the finance. Client then got referred to me by a friend who gave them advice to say, you need a fully assessed pre-approval. The bank that the, the previous person had recommended will only do a 80% approval on that property for the client. An 80% LVR. LVR. Yep. So potentially this client was going to go and pay a deposit on the property. On the back of just that letter? On the back of a letter that didn't take into consideration where they were buying. That risk for the client, for a first home buyer, with only a 5% deposit is huge. For someone who's doing for the first time, 5% is a huge amount. Even for an investor, you're wanting to invest, we don't have enough cash 
to cover the property if we have to buy cash. A lot of people don't. I know I don't yet. <laughs> to pay for a property's cash. So we need to get the approval. And if we're wanting to make an offer, we don't have the ability to make an urgent offer, to make a quick offer. And quite often, winning the deal is not always about paying the most money for it, as I know you understand. It's about negotiating on conditions. And I've seen deals where we can make a deal because we can move faster than other people, because we've got confidence to go ahead with the property. And the pre-approval gives us confidence. We had a client did the pre-approval in December, purchased a property on Monday. So the pay slips were December, income was December, everything was checked in December. They bought a house on Saturday, ordered the valuation on Monday. I didn't need any more pay slips, didn't need any more bank statements, didn't need anything except the contract to sell and the valuation, and it was approved the next day because okay. we had already checked everything. He had okay. confidence to make a competitive offer with a short cooling off period because we had that confidence. And I totally agree when we have a lot more conviction and confidence, not just as a buyer, but also from the perspective of the seller or the selling agent who gets paid at the conclusion of the deal. Correct. They really want to make sure that the deal is going through and also as a potential buyer, not that anyone is challenging it, but that pre-approval letter gives a lot of confidence that A, the person is capable and B, is a serious contender. So it's the speed of execution that matters on the vendor's side sometimes, not necessarily that it is a public information out there. 100% agree. What I do suggest everyone looks at, if you think you've got a pre-approval, you need to review the conditions on that pre-approval. Because point. you would like to have as little conditions as possible. Conditions for a contract of sale, conditions for the valuation, and potentially a rental appraisal. You will always find a condition saying, as long as nothing else has changed, which we understand. Sure. If your pre-approval letter says, subject to a credit check, if it says, subject to the verification of your income, subject to you meeting the XYZ Bank's lending criteria, you need to ask yourself, has someone actually spent the time to check this? Seems like it's a pre-approval saying condition to pre-approval. <laughs> Correct. So that is the big thing, to check the conditions on your pre-approval, because that will give you the confidence to make an offer. Oh, wow. It's a huge information out there, because pre-approval doesn't really mean just pre-approval. It's also the conditions which one has to be mindful of. Because it's not just about getting the deal. It's also about the stress around it. When you have your 0.25% uh, involved, you're emotionally invested, though it, even it might be an investment property, but there's an emotion involved that what sort of deal we are getting in, and then we know that we're getting closer to it, but then there are deadlines like five day cooling off or 10 days finance clause and whatnot. So there's always an element of risk along of, of the emotions as well as the money because there's a building and pest inspection and the process like how commit. we have quite a few things involved there. So at the same time, the different lenders we get to choose reduces if we don't have the time to do it. So mm. There are certain lenders who are offering incredibly low rates, but their approval time is three weeks to four weeks. Now, they are the best offer on paper. If we can do a formal pre-approval, we wait four weeks, we get the pre-approval, and then the client has confidence. Yes. If we buy a property without pre-approval, that lender is not an option anymore. Yes. So that takes that lender out of contention. So we don't get the best deal. We just have to get the quickest deal, not the best deal. And sometimes they're the same, but quite often they're not. Yeah, so what you're referring to is that how much best we have to pick as in from, from how many contenders. Correct. The choices gets limited, then we have only limited uh, choices to make over there. So, no, this is great. Carl, I'm really loving this conversation. So awesome. really, thank, thank you. you so much. If you have to say something uh, to the audience in general, what would that advice be? The most important thing I see for property investors is to understand what they're doing and to work with the team. As a broker, I appreciate it when people ask questions and understand the strategy of why we're doing what we're doing. Quite often, clients will come to me and say, Carl, I just trust you. I know Rusty referred you on. I trust you, whatever you say, Carl. And I prefer it when we actually 
go through the questions, spend time understanding why we're doing what we're doing, understand the strategy for yourself. And so talk to yourself, I'm happy to take a call, book an appointment, or speak to your broker and make sure if you're going through, understand the strategy that you're going ahead with. Why are we selecting XYZ Bank over XYZ Bank? Why are we doing LMI or why are we not doing LMI? Why am I fixing this property and why have you told me not to fix this property? Understand the strategy, understand what you're getting into, understand the reason behind each and every um, decision that you make and own it because it's your portfolio and that's the portfolio that will help you retire. That's the portfolio that will free you up to look after your family, to spend time with your friends, to stop working because you have to but own that and take ownership for it. And it's a lot more powerful when you do that. That's a wealth of knowledge out there summarized in a few words. And I'm pretty sure there's a lot more uh, that, that anyone can actually get off you. Okay. And you mentioned about free consultation there. So if somebody from the audience has reached out to you for the specific questions, how they can reach out to you, Kyle? Thank you so much, Rusty. I'm happy to share. I'm sure on the link we can share a link to book in a meeting. Otherwise, you can talk to Rusty to get my details. We love helping families is our motto. And so quite often we will have conversations with clients and if we can help them, we will help them and we can look at refinancing or opportunities. But we look at clients to say, how can we partner with this person to help their family? If we can't help them, we still spend the time with them. If they've got a really good promotion or they've got something that's really suited for their needs, it's about doing the right thing for people at all times. And I think that's the key to a long-term business success. For sure, that's the right thing to do. I'm happy for the audience to connect with you directly. So do you have your email ID or phone number that you want to share directly? Uh, yeah, fantastic. Um, feel free to contact us. So CFC Finance, uh, you can reach us in the office, one 855 Alternatively, you can email the team. It's customer at cfconline.com.au. Uh, and the team will reach out. We can arrange an appointment because, like I said, we do love helping families. And Kyle really means it. So thank you so much, Kyle, for joining thank us. You, and Thanks for the uh, opportunity. Really appreciate it. And uh, by all means, feel free to connect with him, and I'll share the link in the comments below. Thank you so much, Kyle. Really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Thanks, Rusty. Yes.